Good morning, everyone. It's a great pleasure for me to be able to speak to you, even though I can't be with you in person. And I gather that many of you have assembled to talk about something which is very, very important and I would say the most exciting area when it comes to how we can think about the environment and how people can participate in what is really a global adventure. And it's about citizen science and participation. Now, within the UN, there is yet to begin a revolution that takes your voice and places it onto a global platform. And that's why we've come forward with something called UNEP Live. It really is about you telling us what's happening in your neighborhood, not just in an ad hoc way, but in a sense, giving us knowledge and intelligence about what's happening on the ground. Now, this global platform is, of course, sitting within a very heavy bureaucracy, but that's not to put you off. And I hope that by the time I finish the presentation, you really will want to participate and tell us through the different programs what's happening around you. One of the main things, of course, is that we have to encourage countries and encourage all of us to participate in making access to the data in an open way, in a free way, to enable people to really understand that they can contribute and also be seen to be contributing. When we think about that at a global level, we can say that genuinely there are massive investments together with different countries contributing on Earth observation, on how we can use our phones to really document what is happening. But more and more we see that governments see a connection with citizens by opening up their data portals and trying to make them seem more relevant to everyday life. So from official sources, from data coming from countries, from coming from, coming from international programs, big data, sensor webs, these are all what we're trying to build. And you can be at the very heart of this by building programs that are mobilized by citizens. So we have to do some homework. We have to tag the data in a common way, of course in different languages, but in a way which is meaningful so that the computers and the repositories can really shake hands and bring together knowledge in an inclusive way that we've never been able to see before. And we're going to put together through UNEP Live an analytical range of tools and things and ways in which you can visualize data and present it and publish it, which means it's going to be much more likely that people will pay attention to it and use it in decision making and in their everyday lives. The, the whole way in which we're doing that is to facilitate, so it's obviously through a voluntary process, but it's to facilitate a conversation that will really strengthen the exchange of data because what we also want is to see that people not only give something but get a lot back. So by contributing something in a small way and building on that and creating knowledge around it, we're able to create assessments that tell you what's going on in the world. We're going to be able to tell you about what's happening in the breaking research and at the same time, give you materials that perhaps you might want to use in a school, you might want to use in a local meeting, you might even want to take up and make a, a sort of national or global campaign. So it's about enlarging the knowledge base. It's almost like turning the pyramid of knowledge as we've known it completely on its head. So instead of saying we will distill all our knowledge to, a, to an acute point of truth, in fact, we're saying there are many truths, there are many cultural takes, there are many social takes on knowledge. So we're saying we're going to be more inclusive in the way that we bring knowledge into our everyday being. It's like being in a network of networked knowledge. And the global efforts we're using to put some, in a sense, drive behind that are what UNEP Live is here for. In a way, there are some protocols and principles, and you don't need to worry so much about them. But we want to hear from you because, in a sense, sharing knowledge requires a lot of handshaking, a lot of standards, a lot of procedures. And that's not really what this meeting is all about. But be assured that what we're trying to encourage is that there are industry standards that no matter what you're doing and how you're using your smartphone, your computers, and all of the digital world, as well as some of the very smart technologies, that they're going to be able to talk to each other. So this is beginning to be the Internet of Things where really, literally, objects will talk to each other and give us knowledge which we can't sense in our own right. We're going to do this in a very simple way. We see that the need to take people into a national process, into regional settings, into the global setting, is something which institutionally the UN is very keen to do. We, we clearly need to tell people what's happening, so there are banners about news, there's feedback, there's different languages, there's language on the fly. But once you immerse yourself in the world of UNEP Live, you'll see that we're really 
in a way, fighting a battle to get more information into people's hands, which is more up-to-date, more reliable, and in fact has the stamp of the UN on it wherever possible, but where it's brought to, to UNEP Live through programs like citizen science programs, you will also see your name in stars. I won't have time, unfortunately, here to run it live, but let me tell you about some of the things that we're doing to make your life easier and our life easier to work with programs such as the citizen science ones that you're going to talk about. So first of all, there's mesh networking. Well, what is that? It sounds like a great buzzword. But in fact, what it is, is a, a clever way of what we all know, which is you have a group of friends, I have a group of friends, you have a group of friends. But what we want is that the key people in between, a bit like a virus, form a catalyst. They form, in a sense, the way in which we're going to infect the world with a similar set of ideas. And that mesh networking is something that we're going to roll out across the whole of the UN, really trying to make sure that we get the best efforts combined and synergized so that we really understand a lot more, not only about each other, but also about what we're gathering information on. I've often said that we are very, very strong in our terms of cooperation. We, we know and like the people we cooperate with. But you know, more and more in today's world, we're going to be collaborating with people we neither know and we might not even like them. So this is a way that we can genuinely find our way through that mass of people who are networked, but in a sense they're invisible to us. So let me now turn to language, one of the cornerstones of how we need to interact with each other. And here I'm going to introduce a sort of another concept, which is we can have a running dialogue, instantaneously translated through something called Jibigo. Now I used it very recently in a conversation, in fact a lecture, to a group of people in China who clearly don't have... English is their native language. By having such things as Jibigo, they can hear me in Chinese, I can check the translation in a back sense, so I can assure myself that what they're hearing is really, really the message I want to make. But this is just one small example of how we can change the way that we are going to communicate with people who in the past we were really unable to do or it was just too expensive to achieve. Another thing that UNEP Live will do is enable people from all over the world to work together and actually produce outputs very quickly. Things called book sprints and other ideas where you can pull in open access material whilst you're working together and simultaneously come to a common understanding about what it is that you want to say and then to publish it in a kind of e-publishing or even on paper if that's really what you want to do. Now, this all sounds wild and wonderful and I know that uh, we could genuinely say in many parts of the world that these are not innovations that are easily accessible. But that's a wrong message because what we can see, even in some of the least developed countries, people have smartphones. They may have a very, very poor income, but in fact, the phone itself in, in Africa, for example, has become a device of banking, not just communication, but also that strategic part of everyday life. And so building on that, we're able to really engage citizens in a massively different way. Now, UNIP Live wants to, so to speak, ride on the wave of that without being washed over onto the beach. We really want to stay in control, but nevertheless, we want to offer an opportunity for citizen programs to really create that sense of engagement of real-life activity, real-world situations. And so there's a number of, I guess, their programs, we would call them. They're called the Watches, Air Watch, Noise Watch, Water Watch. New one has just started called Volcano Watch. So if you're in Iceland, I'm sure you'll be extremely interested in that. Put together by groups and consortia of fantastic researchers, but nevertheless offering up a platform that gives the public a sense of what's really happening across the planet, across the Earth, like a planetary skin, and yet people can participate at the same time. So this is like a great open university that we can all contribute in learning and continuing to learn about the world as we see the world changing around us. So of course social media are important, but nevertheless we can really genuinely say that it will be used to great effect. And what do we want to use UNEP Live for? Of course we want to communicate the kinds of information that countries are collecting in a very official way. We want to bring knowledge from the ground up into those decision-making fora. But ultimately, we have a huge challenge. And this is really where I think we want to reach out and I want to reach out to you as a group of really uh, incentivized people. There is a big agenda within the UN and the countries who come to New York to discuss that about what will happen after the Millennium Goals come to an end. There's a big push towards something called the Sustainable Development Goals, which emerged out of Rio, the Rio Plus 20 meeting in Brazil. 
And that really gets to the heart of why we're here and why I'm here and why I went to Nairobi to join UNEP to do this work. And it really is to understand what sustainability means in terms of sustaining prosperity. To transform a kind of aspiration of people who want to do better in their lives and really make it possible for us to transform our response to those changes. To build a collective intelligence so no one person has the answer. There's in fact a very famous book called Too Big to Know where it says it's the room that's the most intelligent, not the people in it. And in the end, to put our collective efforts into creating a regenerative economy. Now, it looks very different from a development perspective. Tracking development has a rather, what I'd say, traditional trajectory of you look at how people are uh, earning income, do they have access to water, and so on. But you know there's a different set of criteria for the emerging middle class, and that's how people consume. People who really are enabled to purchase more things than they've ever dreamed of in their earlier lives. And it's that material consumption that I think more and more we're going to be tracking and looking towards. So it's not just simply about poverty eradication. It's about how can we live sustainably within the planetary boundaries, within those thresholds, which we know day by day are being pushed by climate change. And so one of the elements of UNEP Live is to make it alive, to have ideas coming in from all over. Now you're sitting in Europe and there's just a small range here of some of the great examples that we've seen that have come in about people who've been adapting to climate change in a positive way. And there are hundreds of thousands of these all over the world. The Global South-South Dialogue has brought many of those forward. You can read about those also on UNEP Live. And this is about people changing their own lives in response to change and wanting to share that best practice with as many people as possible. So spread the word. Tell us about great practices. Don't just tell us about the bad things. Tell us about the good things that are happening. And so, you know, it may be that you want to know about urban heat islands when it's not safe for your, maybe your grandparents or your parents to go out because it's too hot or there's an ozone burst. But at the same time, we can have innovative and funny ideas like the toilet where I have to say I'm not sure I really want to be there when the spin cycle starts. It may be quite an unnerving experience. But it's this idea of redefining ourselves in an economy which will have to adapt to a radically different world. So... I want to thank you for giving me the time. UNEP Live is about people. It's not just a technology platform. It's about a web service, about ways of interacting with each other. And I really hope that uh, with this short intervention, you might willingly and hopefully want to contribute to what I hope will be a great global endeavor. Thank you very much, and may I wish you all the very best for the rest of the meeting. Thank you.